today. We're going to hear from all of our fellows and our water school participants. They're going to share their experience and their work. Um, our first group of speakers um, are going to tell you about the application of systems thinking um, into their efforts around increasing community and organizational capacity in their roles. So this group is made up of three um, distinguished people. Uh, Kara Salazar, a Sustainable Communities Extension Specialist from Illinois Indiana Sea Grant. Eric Olson, the Director, of, Director and Lakes Specialist at University of Wisconsin Extension Lakes Problem, Program, who you saw in the movie. And Kristen Flores, she's a Research Social Scientist at the USDA Forest Service. So we're going to hear from all three of them. And then at the end of Kristen's presentation, we'll open it up for questions for the audience for the, the whole group. So without further delay, Kara? Let's see if I can, there you go. Perfect, it's thanks so clicker. much. Oh, I'm gonna grab the clock. Okay, great. Right, go. Thank you, I'm so happy to be here today and share with you my systems thinking and think water uh, fellowship application in designing a new program called Conservation Through Community Leadership. Um, I am from Purdue University in West Lafayette, so the program that I'm designing is focused on Indiana audiences, and in some cases we'll be working regionally in Great Lakes states in collaboration with Sea Grant colleagues. This program design and development began about two years ago uh, through our Purdue Extension efforts. Uh, we have a multidisciplinary team that was formed uh, to focus on community planning efforts, and in particular, our efforts are focusing on building capacity for local planning around natural resources. So the program that I'm going to be focusing on is talking about our efforts in getting this up and running, and will also um, the pilots that we've been able to deliver within the last year. Our team's been quite busy, and it's been very much a team effort. So as many of you know and have probably experienced, uh, land, uh, land use and local planning is a complex process, and it's filled with a multitude of perspectives. Many of those um, include community values, as well as environmental perspectives, economic perspectives, and coupled with that, uh, we have government regulations. In Indiana, we are a home rule state. So what that means is that communities are empowered to plan, but they are not required to. So natural resource planning looks different and is applied differently in communities across the state. Also, our Purdue Extension County educators have a very unique opportunity to serve as required by state statute on local plan commissions as well as parks and recreation boards. So to help with our local communities battling and working in um, these issues with local planning um, and also to support our county educators who are in the midst of working with communities on local planning issues, we designed this program to bring out a multitude of perspectives and we coach them through capacity building as well as community engagement and public participation. And in particular, we use a framework that is incorporating the perspectives of political, environmental, social, technological, legal, and economic, so that we can bring intentionally these groups together to support the local planning process. Our uh, program design has three parts to it. So what I'm going to do in my presentation is talk to you how we use systems thinking within this program design is also, and also the related maps that were created. And I'll talk a little bit about our pilot implementation and some of the next steps, particularly as it relates to our systems thinking process here. So the three parts that we've identified are the planning scale, process, and community impact, the extension program design, delivery, and training, and community engagement. So we began our program design thinking through the planning scale as well as the process. This helped our team to identify which types of plan that we can contribute to, that we have the expertise in, and the resources that we can leverage to help our local county educators. This also helped us identify the local leadership that we needed to engage with and how we can work effectively together with an education and outreach effort within a local planning context. 
Uh, in addition, we also then uh, looked through the community action planning meeting series options. So once we identified the planning scale, we were able to map out the different types of planning meetings and what our team's roles and responsibilities were within each of those aspects. Because we're a multidisciplinary team, not every team member is going to be involved in every stage. So this helped us to better communicate and understand when we were working within a certain process and who we needed to bring from other team members to be effective in this uh, identifying this local planning effort. Simultaneously, we also designed public participation and community engagement methods. So we identified the different possibilities, including what was mandatory for public input and participation, as well as the voluntary education outreach and visioning efforts that our team focuses on uh, more closely, which is helping communities to co-create a plan with their local leadership that is reflective of their values, and also based on these multiple perspectives that I mentioned earlier. And then finally, our team mapped out um, the process through poly policy adoption, implementation, and, and uh, resulting impact. This helped us to see where the process would lead to. It helped us to communicate to local leadership, as well as to the diversity of stakeholders that were participating in the process, so that they could all see where their parts um, and their roles were, and particularly for those who were not uh, as aware of the planning process and how the different stakeholder groups could be engaged. And of course, we are also working on a measurement and evaluation aspect uh, to this uh, process and this program. And uh, so we're also helping communities think through their impact and their next steps. And through that, we're using a ripple, map ripple mapping exercise to help the communities uh, identify what they did and what the impact was and what they're looking for doing uh, moving forward. And we are using uh, the mapping process then to leave behind with the community so that they can continue to continue contribute to it and use it for their future efforts. We took all of this program design time and we were able to uh, implement the pilot program with six communities over the past year. So again, we've been very busy, uh, but it's also been very exciting. Uh, the uh, communities that we've been working with have focused on watershed planning, comprehensive plan updates, in particular integrating uh, natural resource elements um, into their plans. And we also have started working with uh, Invasive Species Council formation. I'll briefly talk about two of these initiatives. Uh, we worked in Gibson County, Indiana. Uh, we started working with the Soil and Water Conservation District. They were interested in updating their watershed management plan, and they wanted to reach out to more stakeholders and a diversity of stakeholders than they had uh, with their previous planning process. So they worked with us through the series of action planning meetings to identify local needs, and they were able to uh, create a more robust planning team to get going on their watershed management plan, and then they're gearing up for their uh, funding um, ap application. We we're also uh, able to bring in several different types of technical resources and assistance through that um, process. Uh, the other community I'll focus on is Owen County. Uh, we worked with them on their Invasive Species Council formation. This also started with the local Soil and Water Conservation District. This uh, particular project was a little bit of a surprise. We knew that there was a need, and we designed our program to meet this need for Invasive Species Council formation. But simultaneously in this state, there was an announcement that we will have funding available for counties statewide uh, to develop these councils. So our program became pretty important all of a sudden, and we're now in discussions for how we can replicate this um, to support additional communities. And so that's been very exciting too. So based on uh, the success of these pilots, we're now moving into our train the trainer, which is the last part of our program design, as you can see in this map here. And we'll be training cohorts of extension educators, soil and water conservation district staff, and other um, technical assistance groups to support each other and to support the communities and the different types of action planning processes that they're interested in. So we'll be using systems thinking and, of course, this mapping process to help these groups identify the roles responsibilities, how they work together, and then how we can most effectively implement the projects um, in their local communities. And that will be um, launching later this year in 2018. 
So this Think Water experience came at a very opportune time for this program development. Uh, it really helped us to facilitate our cross-disciplinary uh, understanding of the program outcomes, the associated steps. Well, we were all working from different types of disciplines, so uh, some groups and some individuals were more comfortable thinking about systems, others wanted to stay very narrowly focused. So having some of these discussions allowed people to see where they fit into the program and the process. Um, and similarly, the, the visual maps and discussions identified some gaps and some new opportunities. Uh, we again saw some things that we hadn't necessarily thought through and some places and ways that we could engage with our communities with technical assistance that the mapping process helped us with. It also improved our ability to translate the idea of a complex planning process into a local planning program, particularly with the groups that we're working with, the local leadership, the community stakeholder groups, and then of course with our training team. We were able to bring that together quite effectively. And again, as I've mentioned, this is uh, very much a team effort, so I want to acknowledge the extension uh, team that has been working with me over the past two years. Uh, they've been a fantastic group to work with. We've also had a very engaged statewide advisory board and um, those um, agencies, associations are listed here. Uh, they've helped us with needs assessments, with peer review, as well as with identifying uh, the pilot communities to help launch this program. So that's been an invaluable partnership too. And finally, I'd like to acknowledge the funding that made um, this program uh, possible, as well as the resulting pilot implementation. Uh, Purdue Extension did fund, uh, provide a lot of the seed funding for it. We also received funding by the Renewable Resources Extension Act and, um, of course, Illinois Indiana Sea Grant. So thank you very much for your time and attention today, and I'll look forward to having some additional discussion uh, at the end of this session.